London. Yes, what do I know of London? Well, there's not much of a view from our office window. But I think Joe would be surprised if he knew how much I enjoy my bus rides each day. It's a sort of quiet interlude between rushing from home to the bus and from the bus to the office. I can look down and somehow I feel sort of remote, peaceful. Funny, really, because I'm not a peaceful sort of person. When it's fine enough, I take my sandwiches and eat them in St. Paul's churchyard. I don't remember what it was like around here before the Blitz, but somehow the cathedral gives me a comfortable feeling. It looks so solid with damage all around. I don't suppose you could see it very well before. Sitting eating my sandwiches, I often try and visualize what London must have been like when the Romans lived there. When the wall enclosed a square mile and now, 1900 years later, it's still a square mile with a life of its own. Somehow, like St. Paul's, it gives me a comfortable feeling. But everything must be all right if things can last so long. Don't you think so? Gosh, I'll be late! Yes, she'll be late. She'll meet the boss on the doorstep and then the fat will be in the fire. Poor little typist. At the outset of her life and no time to enjoy it. Oh dear, there he is. Yes, I'm the boss she's frightened of. I know she's arrived late, but, well, what does it matter? She won't do it again. I suppose she's been daydreaming somewhere. I don't get much time for that. My life is just one busy round of office, boardrooms and appointments. My London and my life are all mixed up. My London is seen from a car window. It's a pretty restricted view, but then I suppose in a way my life is restricted too. Restricted by the need to make more and more money. I live in Mayfair, and on those rare occasions when I have a bit of time on my hands, I often wander through the little streets and alleys around Shepherd's Market. There's not much of a market nowadays, just enough to make the name ring true. But it's hard to believe you're only a stone's throw from Piccadilly. There's more the atmosphere of a county town than you would imagine to be possible in the middle of the West End. Sometimes I take a stroll through St. James's Park, perhaps one of the loveliest in this great teeming city. Charles II turned it into a pleasure garden, which in varying forms it has remained ever since. From St. James's Park, I can gaze on some of the views which are the very essence of London. A London which nowadays I have precious little time to enjoy. Another spot I love is Trafalgar Square, made cool by the splashing of the fountains, with St. Martin standing nearby. Many famous people were buried in the churchyard, like Jack Shepherd, the highwayman, and Nell Gwynne. But it's really the fountains which attract me to Nelson Square. Of all the buildings around, I suppose perhaps the National Gallery is the most dominating and on the pavement below, the men who will never get their pictures hung inside, but with a faith in their own ability which is unconquerable. That's my London. So different from my typists, and that of this poor fellow here. That's the London I see. Feet. Feet which walk straight past. That's the trouble nowadays. Everybody's in too much of a hurry to stop and look. But when they do, well, you can usually count on something falling into the cap. I wanted to be a great artist once. I still do. My London isn't really the London of the Trafalgar Square pavement. It's the London I visit when I've had a good week and can afford a bit of time off. Like the quaint sideways of the temple, where the legal boys come and go, and where Fountain Court is still as peaceful and as paintable as ever, in spite of the air raids. You know, the boss called me poor. But how can I be poor when I have time to stand and paint? Being a bit of an artist, I suppose I'm drawn to Chelsea. 
Chelsea where the Bohemians live and drink outside the local when the weather plays fair. Hmm, Chelsea. I suppose if things had been better, I might have had a studio there. But somehow I don't think I should have had the patience to be a great portrait painter. No. But one day I shall paint a masterpiece. A masterpiece of London. And then I shall be happy. One day... One day. Well, <laughs> I suppose that's life, but somehow the London days slip by. London isn't a great deal of time for failures. And I suppose I'm a failure. But in the end, London old girl, I'll show you. I'll paint a picture you'll be proud of. But it won't make any difference. You may like it, but you won't stop to say so. That's you. That's your personality. You're a hard mistress, old girl. But I love you, just the same. And there you have it. What is London? Is it bricks and mortar? Is it the people? Is it the lights? Is it big business? Is it the lovers in the park? What gives it its personality? Does it come from its policemen? Its workers? Its youngsters? Its wealth? Or its failures? I don't know. There's no answer to it. You see, London isn't everybody's cup of tea. Often you hear foreigners complain. Noisy, smoky city. But it seems to me there's magic in the fog and rain. Maybe it's because I'm a Londoner that I love London so. Maybe it's because I'm a Londoner that I think of her wherever I go. I get a funny feeling inside of me just walking up and down. Maybe it's because I'm a Londoner that I love London. London isn't everybody's cup of tea. Often you hear foreigners complain. Noisy, smoky city, but it seems to me there's magic in the fog and rain. Maybe it's because I'm a Londoner that I love London so. Maybe it's because I'm a Londoner that I think of her wherever I go. I get a funny feeling inside of me just walking up and down. Maybe it's...